world travel is not easy for me anymore after what I did to myself. <laughs> I must dil diligently secure a visa for every country I wish to explore, except Canada and Mexico. Mm -hmm. I have to do more extensive world travel homework, you know, to set up a trip. Uh, than an ordinary American citizen or any a citizen of any country <clears throat> with one of those regular passports, national passports. Hmm. Well, in 2011, I plucked up my courage and flew into um, Angkor Wat in Cambodia without a visa. At the Angkor Wat airport, I play my role impeccably as a straight Buddhist pilgrim. <laughs> I'm adapting. I wear a business suit and carry an expensive briefcase and look as boring as possible and keep my mouth shut. Don't say a word. Mm -mm. Wealthy, boring, <laughs> you know. Troublesome border issues never arise most of the time because it, mm. Look it, obviously nations don't have a clue what to do with me. I fr fr frustrate gov government computers because, like I said, a common human being fits no known category in reality. And I'm enthusiastic about the eminent flowering of humanity and earth people and with the gift of gab. You know, I love to pontificate and preach, you know. Let's, let's get old Martin Luther King on your ass, okay? Um, Long-windedly, yeah, mm -hmm. about earth life. And to anyone who will listen especially bureaucrats. <laughs> That's why they tend to move me along to somewhere else. You know, mm -hmm. Well, look, my favorite story in this regard is my entry into Bali a few years ago. I dutifully apply for a 60-day uh, Balinese visa at the Indonesian Comfort consulate uh, near Fisherman's Wharf neighborhood in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. At the application window, I lay out my documents, uh, my alien's registration card, my green card next to my San Francisco birth certificate. <laughs> Absolutely contradictory paperwork. Oh yeah, this causes serious wrinkles on the forehead of the very polite uh, diplomat there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's bewildered. He's never seen a <clears throat> setup like this. So he inquires honestly. What happened to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I answer honestly. I am crazy. We smile at each other knowingly. Okay, I'll give you 60 days. He appreciates my candor. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, now fast forward. I'm on Cathay Pacific, all oh, that trendy San Francisco airport, get on these beautiful Hong Kong carriers with the beautiful stewardesses, Asian. Land in Hong Kong, well, it takes like nine hours just to get there. Stretch my legs. Have a coffee and you know change planes to Denpasar, Bali. By this time it's like 3 a.m. when the, our jumbo jet disgorges its frazzled, wrinkled, frustrated passengers. Oh yeah, and uh, so we it's, it's you know a lot of people, hundreds of people, jumbo jet. Uh, we file in long lines, about three really long snaking lines through to get checked into Bali. 
well. The Bali immigration agents, they, uh, they think they're the Pope because they, they're in these pulpits, these high raised pulpits, like uh, uh, are way over us as we sort of uh, uh, go through below looking up at them like panicking cattle, you know, to going to the slaughter. It's like, what's going on? Um, I hand my travel document to the Lord. Oops. He doesn't like what he sees. Mm -mm. He insists that I require huh? a real passport and to explain myself forthwith. I imagine the handcuffs going on soon. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I truthfully reply, like my teacher Tukche taught me, to be truthful. And I just say, look, I had a vision at a Tibetan monastery as a young man. And when I witnessed the whole earth in meditation, uh, you know, in one glance from about where the moon is, from this perspective, I could not, I could see that in reality, no real borders exist. And that the separation of human beings is an illusion. It's a fundamental illusion. <laughs> Lord. Ugh. <sighs>